In this clip, we will light and render our character. Okay, I'm going to start off by setting our document size here for 2048 here. Hit tab and enter it in again. Enter and next go ahead and click resize. Say yes. It's going to go up to layer and clear. That's where clear is located. And redraw our model. And click edit. Now that we have that set up, we'll go into document and we'll go ahead and set up our custom view here, like so. Next we'll go ahead back into document and we will zoom out to the extents of our, our workspace area here. I'm just going to maximize in our viewport and this is what we want to render at but since it'll take us quite a while to get results, we're going to go ahead and click actual and zoom back down. All right. So we're still in the same document of 2048, just a smaller thumbprint of our full screen size. I guess you can call it. Just appended a ninja star here. And the reason I did that is to go ahead and import this reference box in your project files. Now, the reason you might want to use this is Rendering in ZBrush is highly dependent on your size of your model in ZBrush and importing this cube into your scene will make sure that we both have relatively the same size and we can use the same render settings. Okay, so make sure you check that out before you use the settings that we'll be using. Snap back to our custom pose here. Let's zoom out a bit. A little bit too close there. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and go into our light here. And we only have one light standard. And we're going to go ahead and click render, render properties. We're going to make sure shadows are turned on. Close that. And then BPR shadow, we're going to set our settings pretty much to this right here. Except we're going to change resolution to 2048 same as our document everything else make sure is the same in your settings and click render all right we're back and here's our result here not too bad and so we're going to see how things can look if we add a little bit more light to our scene i'm going to click the second light here turn it on turn it off you can see what it looks like next i'm going to go ahead and move it to the corner here and play with my intensity to get something a little like this here. Turn it on and off. See the effect. Click BPR. Okay. Here's our results here. Next I'm going to go ahead and dock my color panel over here. And go into document and zoom out to the full extent of our document here. Like so. And now I'm going to go back into document and change our background a bit here play with the slider so I'm gonna click back and click and drag into that color panel and pick this kind of turquoise color here the reason I picked this vibrant color is to make for easy masking when we're in Photoshop here so now we full screened our character we're gonna go ahead and render with those settings okay and here are our results and if you like this you can go ahead into document export name it and save it where you like and we can go ahead and view it in Photoshop and see what it really looks like at a one-to-one -on -one scale here I like how it looks let's go ahead to our next render pass here back into ZBrush in the next section, we're going to use this Clean Tool Master plugin you can get from Pixelogic's website. Just download that and install it, and we'll be ready to use in the next section. All right. Picking up where we left off here, I'm going to go ahead up to the Z plugin area and click the Clean Tool Master. And I'm going to go ahead and click the Poly Paint Off All, and that'll run through all our sub tools and turn off all the poly paint and material information for us. 
the automation makes it really easy for us all right now that that's all done let's go ahead and move on with other materials here let's go ahead and select a basic material here either one will do let's go ahead and go into our lighting setup move it around and if you click on it you'll send the light to the back of your sphere here allowing you to create a rim light like so playing with the intensity and open up your modifiers inside your material palette you can further edit this here turn down the ambient and diffuse bump it up my specular and my goal here is to create a rim light effect here it's playing with the specular curve to tighten it real nice light okay I'm just playing with that curve there looks good let's go ahead and render that and here are our results if you want you can go ahead into document and save that out all right here's another pass we made here let's go ahead and go into our material palette and select a uh, matte cap white either one will do and this pass will be our ambient inclusion let's continue and edit this in our modifiers section here just playing with the cavity detection here since there are damage and scratches on our character we want to capture some of that Let's go ahead and change our settings from shadow to ambient inclusion and match your settings to these. All right. And we will get similar results. All right. Let's go ahead and render that out and return when we're done. All right. Here we are. Let's go ahead. And if you like that, Go up to document and export okay now this time we're going to go ahead and create a outline render for kind of a special effect you'll see when we get inside photoshop here i'm just editing these modifiers here just playing around with them i couldn't really tell you the extent of what they're doing exactly it's all visual so just play with those if you don't like the default there and I'm just gonna go ahead and render this without shadow or AO on since it's not needed since we're just doing black and white here and once you're done with that you can go ahead and export that alright this time we're gonna go ahead and render another effect a reflective pass here we're gonna go ahead and reset our settings to the shadow settings which are still here and render that out like so and here are our results and go up to document if you like and hit export and save that where you like for use later on in Photoshop when we composite all our renders together and last but not least we're going to create a clown pass here I went and selected the flat material turned off the lines for our polyframe and next I'm going to go ahead and change the background back to a dark color since all the polyframe colors will be uh, vibrant colors. Go ahead and click render. And that should go fairly quick. And here's our clown pass. But that does conclude this clip. I'll see you in the next. In this clip, we'll composite our renders inside of Photoshop. All right. I went ahead and uploaded all our render passes inside of Photoshop here. Let me just run through them here. Order them like this should help us going forward from here. I'm just going to turn these off. First things first, I'm going to grab the background and duplicate that. Go ahead and fill it with the black. And next, I'm going to go ahead and use my magic wand. And turn my tolerance up. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off contiguous and select our background color and delete. And next, I'm just going to go ahead and delete the backgrounds with that selection to all the other passes here and turn all the layers off but the base and next one we'll go ahead and use hue and saturation to lighten up the background and it's clipping off the menu here but I'll just click 
colorize here and I'm going to go for a desaturated blue or a bit of a slate blue color for our background just to kind of contrast with the warm accents in our character here. Next I'm going to go back to the background or base copy here and I'm going to go to my levels and I'm just going to drag the white pin over just to clamp my levels there. You can see we already have a better setup here. So I'm going to turn on the ambient inclusion pass here and I'm going to go ahead and set the blend mode to multiply and you can already see a big boost in our depth there as far as dark colors there. I'm just going to go ahead and play with the levels for that. See if it's a plus or not. I'm going to say no. Just cancel that. Let's go ahead to the reflective layer and we're going to play with the levels of that. Bring that white pen over. Brighten up our our reflective layer. And I'm noticing we missed a bit of that background green in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and zoom in here and use my magic wand to select that. Missed a bit of that. Should double check for that, but go ahead and delete it. All right, now we've taken care of that. Let's go back to our reflective layer and set it to lighten. All right, now we'll go ahead and play with the levels of the reflective layer a little bit more here. Since we turn it to lighten, see if we can get something a little bit. Now even though my screen is clipped off, levels is located in image, adjustment, levels. Right there. All right. So back to this here, I'm going to go ahead and lower my opacity just a little bit for the reflective render here. Around 80%. You can zoom in, see how things are looking at 100%. Okay. Let's go ahead and turn on and off some of these layers just to see the effect. You can see we have a bit more detail with the help of the ambient inclusion map there or a render pass. Next I'm going to go ahead and select the clown pass or clown render here. And even though it's not visible, we can go ahead and select each poly group just by clicking. All right, and I'm using our current view to click the areas that are fabric. So I can go ahead and delete that from the reflective render here. So I'm just going to go ahead and run down from top to bottom of the character, just selecting areas that shouldn't have a shiny and or reflective surface. Okay. All right, just about done make no selections here I'm just going to go hide my selections go to reflective render and delete all the reflective areas from the matte surface okay now we got that done let's go ahead and play with these rim light render passes here select rim pass one and set the blend mode to screen all right and turn it on and off it's like turning on the lights on and off Seems I have a bit more of that teal color haloing around my character here. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. All right, let's tie my tolerance up a little bit more. And select it again and delete. Okay. I'm back to these rim passes here. So I got a little more here. Let me check this other one as well. Okay, I think we've I think we've finally gotten rid of the teal hopefully okay all right let's go ahead and adjust the levels of this and just see how it looks I'm just gonna play with the midpoint here it seems to give me some pretty good results okay let's go ahead and perform the same task on the rim light too. screen blend mode I'm gonna zoom in here and I see a little slight teal edging here this teal color is relentless. I need to really set my tolerance higher for this. All right, let's go ahead and make sure we delete it from all layers. And it's finally gone. All right, it's the end of the teal. So let's go back to our rim two 
and play with its levels. Play with that midpoint there. Really tighten up the rim light. Now if you want, what you could do is once you're done with the levels, you can go ahead and bring up hue and saturation, like so. And we can go ahead and click colorize and move the saturation slider till you see a bit of color. Move the lightness down and it'll intensify a bit. And move the hue to select a color that you might like. And it's a really good way to get some dynamic coloring added to your character like this. Let's play with our levels again. See if we can intensify that even more. If you drag the dark pin to the right, you'll intensify the effect even more. All right. Now let's go back and tweak some of the settings on our render passes here. I'm just gonna lower the opacity a bit for that rim light, or both rim lights here. Somewhere around uh, close to 80. It's working. Sometimes I'll just turn them on and off to see the effect. And that looks good for the reflective. Just turn it on and off. Now to the outline layer here. I'm just going to go ahead and go into image, adjustments, and invert. And now we're going to go ahead and select the multiply blend mode. And give us kind of a comic outline here. Turn it off and on. It's a desired effect. It's rather you like it or not. I do like it. It kind of makes it look like, like I said, a comic or reminds me of Borderlands, the, the game. So you can do that if you choose. Let's go ahead and add a few more effects to our character here before we conclude. I'm just going on in here and using a soft eraser to erase some highlights from some areas I don't want, such as this tube here. It's supposed to be a bit of a matte material. He even lighten some of the outline to get less of an intense effect in areas if you chose. Create another layer right on top of the background here. Named it Strip. I'm just going to go ahead and use my marquee. And drag out an area. And next I'm going to go ahead and fill it with white. And next I'm going to go ahead and set the blend mode to overlay. Bit of a transparency there. Picking up some of that background color. And lowering my opacity to something around about 54. I'm just going to go ahead and desaturate the background a bit more. I want too much color back there. Alright, see how things are looking. Just add another layer here. And in this one, I'm going to add a gradient off the floor here. I'm just going to drag it up. Just keep dragging until I get the right amount I want. Just go ahead and name it Floor Gradient. Okay. Let's go ahead and now make another layer and make a gradient at the top here. And lower my opacity a bit. So it's not to overpower the details of his head here. Just gonna go ahead and name that one top gradient. Let's go ahead and see what's next. I'm gonna duplicate the base there. And I'm gonna go ahead and select transform and select scale. And move it on down. I know this looks weird, but it's a method here. I've seen someone do this trick before. I thought it was pretty awesome. Next, I'm going to make it black. And this makes us a instant shadow. Now, I'm not too sure how accurate this is in method, but I thought it was pretty cool. Worth a shot. I'm going to go ahead and transform it. Slim it in some. It feels pretty, pretty solid to me. Go ahead and add a bit of a Gaussian blur here, just to just to be sure. All right, I said okay. And now I'm gonna go ahead and name that drop shadow. 
Okay, now he's grounded in our scene here. Next, let's go ahead and control click our background, our base copy, and make a layer right underneath the clown pass. And I'm going to make a gradient filling a little bit of the lower leg region here just to get a bit of a fall off in light. Let's name that leg gradient. All right, and then lower the opacity of that to 41. Looks good. Now I'm just dragging in a some text that was made for this guy here. We'll call it a logo, but not really a logo, just kind of a name plate. Just put it down here like so. All right, and let's play with that shadow a little bit more. Just gonna drag it in. Just totally dished the whole technique, but that's all right. Let's just lightly erase the edges here. But that is just about it. Let's nudge a few things around. Let's go ahead and crop it in some. But that does just about conclude this clip. I will see you in the next.